again, Zena applied to the internship program to learn more about the Holocaust, which is like everyone wanted to do. And she's a nursing major and she wants to become a registered nurse eventually. But she's also interested in being an elementary school teacher. So, she's going to win out. <laughs> yes, exactly. Which one? So she likes working with uh, the elderly and with small children, which I think actually makes a lot of sense. So we'll see what path ends up happening for her. Um, so I'll pass it along to Zena. <laughs> Hi, my name is Zena Williams, and I had the opportunity to begin this internship through a friend of mine who um, she said there's an internship that's going on with the Holocaust and she said would you like would you be interested in joining so I said sure you know and I decided to apply and I got in <laughs> thanks to Miss Berman and when I went to interview when I first met Miss Silka she the first question she asked me she said um, why why do the Holocaust? Why did you register to, you know, apply to, you know, with the Holocaust? And I said to her, growing up, it was never taught to me in school. You know, the school that I went to never mentioned anything about the Holocaust to us. And I only heard about the Holocaust, but I never learned anything about it. And this opportunity was the greatest opportunity for me to learn more about the Holocaust. So she was like, Tell your friend I said thank you for, <laughs> for making you a part of the internship, and I was grateful. So, Miss Ellen Zaka, um, she was born in Germany, and li but lived in Berlin with her parents. And she was the eldest of her parents. She was ten years old, and she had a brother who was five. <laughs> Ellen was never a part of any of the camps back in Germany. So she was mostly grateful for that. Um, her dad, she she told me her dad was a shoe salesman who was a shoe salesman for a factory and her mom was a homemaker while she attended school and pretty much Ellen and her family lived in the suburbs and had a pretty simple life up until 1933 when Hitler came in and started making laws. Over, she said, over 10,000 children were sent to England that year and most of them came from Germany. Ellen's parents tried to obtain visas for her, for themselves and Ellen and her brother. However, her parents did not get the visas, but Ellen and her brother did. So they were able to leave Germany before any war crimes, you know, started back in Germany. Um, they were accepted and to the kinder transport. <laughs> they left on the kinder transport. However, Ellen and her brother did not leave together. They were separated when they left on the kinder transport. Um, on July 25th, 1939, the war broke out, and on September 3rd, 1939, Silke went to Holland by, when she went to Holland by boat to England. Um, her brother, you know, went to, he ended up in a home. By the family. Yeah, in a home with a family, and Ellen lived in south of England with a, uh, she ended up with a lady who was a retired nurse. So she ran a center, of, a rehabilitation center of 10 women um, in their 60s. So Ellen lived with her during those years. And she lived there for up to seven years, up until 1946. During that year, Circus aunt, who lived here in New York, um, got her a visa to come to Boston, Massachusetts. Ellen went to college. She studied to become a librarian at the Queen's Library. <laughs> she worked there for over 33 years, which is a very, very long time. <laughs> yeah, so after that, she got married. She met her husband. <laughs> and they have three kids, one boy and two girls, of whom now they have four grandchildren. 
she has been married for over 62 years. I was shocked. <laughs> I was shocked. I was like, 62 years? That's really pretty long. <laughs> Very fortunate. Very fortunate. Yeah. Miss <laughs> um, Ellen, uh, back in Germany, they lived comfortably. And uh, Ellen's brother, at the age of five, um, never got to see a sister, but she kept in contact with her brother and her mother, who wrote letters back and forth, back and forth to each other. However, her brother, you know, being separated from your sister and your parents, you know, living in this home and not being able to see them again, it affected him the most in a way that he committed suicide at the age of 72 years old. And she doesn't really talk about it much. You know, it's memories of her brother, but at the same time, it's, you know, it's heartbreaking for her and her family. So after that, she never mentions anything about it. You know, even though her family knows about him, she doesn't say anything. She just has those memories and the letters and what they share together. So my experience with the Holocaust <laughs> is, you know, life changing to see what's been going on around the world for over 70 years, you know. And I've learned that there are a lot of people out there that has went through so much that went through so much, you know, and it's, it opens your eyes, it opens everything that, it changes you. It changes you really, 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 really drastically. And I've learned from Helen that, you know, there are many things in this world to be grateful for. Be grateful that you have family, be grateful that you never had to experience what we went through back when she was growing up. Um, and I want to be able to tell people her story, <laughs> you, know, you know, say I've met, I've met a survivor of the Holocaust for the first time in my life, and I want to share that story with others. I want to tell them that there are other people, no matter how much you complain about your life today, you know, there are other people that's been through more than you have. So be grateful, be thankful that you have life and you have your family. It's not easy being separated from your family and not seeing them again, you know. So be happy, be grateful, <laughs> and you know, it can change, it can either make you or change you, break you or change you, that's it. <laughs> Ellen, do you want to say anything or? Yeah, a couple of things. Uh, <laughs> now, Zena, we clicked, there was a, I can't think of the right word, but there was, you know, it, it just clicked. She, she understood, and it, she asked wonderful questions, and uh, I was happy to answer them, but as she said, and as the gentleman said, we haven't talked about it much in the past. Um, two things I want to say. Um, for the parents that let their children go on the kinder transport, and there were almost 10,000 of us, uh, we were youngsters. I don't think we really understood what was happening. Uh, it was almost like we're going on a big vacation, like going to summer camp. Uh, the parents played down the separation, and I think the bravery was uh, shown by the parents by letting their children go and the parents deep down knew that many of us would never be reunited as we were not. So that's number one. And in answer to the young man who's studying the result of trauma, uh, my brother's story, and he was only five years old when he had to leave his parents. and. It had such a, an effect on him that he had difficulty 
in relating to people and coping with life. And he had a lifelong hatred deep down of anything German. And he did sublimate that by being very active in Jewish causes. And he, was, he went to Israel on a kibbutz. He was happy there. But unfortunately, life was not good to him. And he repeatedly felt rejected because my family that brought me over to America offered to bring him over. And the family that took him in, who were childless, and they gave him a good home, wouldn't let him go. They said they had adopted him, but in truth, they had never legally adopted him. So again, he felt rejected. He had some family in the US, he couldn't join it. And as I said, he had difficulty relating to people. He was an entrepreneur, but had no financial uh, skills. And when his financial situation came to too much, he took his life. And we consider him a victim of Hitler, even though he survived. Thank you for listening.